Hello everybody, this is the GoTo family. Today we are on the island of Crete, close to Matala. Right now we are actually just about to go and check out the old palace of Phaestos. We just parked our car over there and we are just making the small hike to the old palace of Phaestos. This is an unbelievable sight and you can get a small glimpse of it from over here. Look at that. see that it's not super crazy packed today which is actually really nice it's definitely not as busy as it normally is and you saw the price of the tickets at the entrance there it is eight euros for uh, adults or the full price and you have a reduced rate of four euros and kids are free so we just pay two tickets for 16 euros for the entire family in typical runes fashion you're gonna see that there's not a lot of shade here and actually a lot of the parts that are shaded uh, are actually corded off so you can't really access them uh, I'm not exactly sure the reason maybe it's because of the social distancing because there are a lot of seats on that side and they don't want people to sit too closely together that could be one of the reasons I am not exactly sure Why is Phaestos important? Why is it a place that you want to come and visit? Well, Phaestos is the second most important site of Minoan civilization. The first, of course, being the site Aknosos, which is close to the city of Heraklion on the northern coast of Crete. Phaestos here, uh, the, uh, the complex here, or the temple, uh, was built in, 17, in the 1700s BC. So this place is about close to 4,000 years old. That is crazy, crazy, crazy old. Now this place right here was actually built on top of another older temple. So this is kind of referred to as the new temple of Phaestos because it was built on top of a previous temple. So right behind me right here, you have the stairs and just look at these old, old stairs. These are incredible. And these stairs were leading up to the entrance, which is called the Propylaia. So you can just see how old everything looks here at the Palace of Phaestos. This is really, really different from what you get to see in Knossos because in Knossos, of course, uh, most of the temple or a lot of the temple, if not most of it, was actually rebuilt. Whereas right here, you actually have uh, pretty much the temple uh, in its uh, ruined state. But you can see that uh, there are no modern looking rooms that are built on top of these old ruins. Oftentimes coming to ruins and historical sites cannot be that interesting for kids. So you have to get things that will make them interesting. So for example, there's a lot of writing inscriptions in the bricks here. So the kids are having fun finding them. In here? Yeah, right here, right here. Mommy. That's just like something to- kind of. It's like Is a there pop. any hidden writing? Did you see writing? Oh, look at that. 
And there's one here too. That Hello. looks like a chicken foot. So we've oh, seen, so we've seen stars, um, like a chicken foot axes, and some other things. Axes. Axes, like an axe. Oh, oh, axes, right. What kind of animal does this look like? Animal. It looks like an animal to me. Do you want me to lift you up, Ella, so you can see better? What type uh, of animal does that look like? I don't know. Is it a frog? Well, wow. what about a fish? Or maybe a fish, yeah. It looks like a fish. They would store their food and grains and things in enclosed places that didn't have any sun, obviously. It's kind of like a, the old refrigerator. <laughs> like three, four thousand years old. This is like a refrigerator back in the day. It comes through the portion. Look at this, guys. It's the Queen's Megaron. The floors are paved with gypsum slabs with red plaster filling. So the upper walls, which are no longer here, would have been decorated with paintings like frescoes. She passed away a long, long time ago. What did she ask? Where's the Queen? <laughs> yeah, she's not here anymore. Just a few kilometers away, about three or four kilometers away from the palace at Festos is this site called Agia Triada. And this was like a summer residence, like a royal villa for the people of Festos. So this is where we're at right now. We just got our tickets. They are four euros for adult children are free. So we paid about eight euros in total. So this place is way quieter than Festos. And actually right now Festos is also quiet, of course. It might have something to do with the whole coronavirus situation. To come here, you have to take this road that is a little scary, I have to say, that is kind of perched on the mountains, uh, but it's not really very long from Faisal's to here, so it's not really that bad, but definitely very, very quiet. Not many people, actually. You won't see anybody. There's, I think, some people over there, but it's really, really nice and quiet, and honestly, I like it this way. What I like about Agia Triada is that I, it's not quartered off, so you can see that none of the areas are really, maybe besides uh, that area over there, but besides that, it's not quite as quartered off as Faisal's uh, was, which is really nice because you can really walk around freely. Um, you know, you can walk in between the ruins and you can really take nice pictures. Uh, you could really take your time, relax, observe, uh, and, and take it all in. Oh look, there's a cute church here. Now this side right here and Festos as well, they are more untouched 
than your typical archaeological site. Some people will say, oh, it's just a bunch of rocks. Why do you have to go there? Well, the thing is, I actually really like to see things more in their natural state instead of something that has been kind of painted with a pretty brush uh, just to kind of turn into a modern tourist attraction. So if you want to see something that's more in its natural state, definitely Phaistos and Agia Triada here right next to Phaistos. Uh, you're going to get that experience. And I like it, some people might not, but I really like the experience. Of course, there's a whole bunch of history here that I'm not gonna bore you with, uh, but if you're coming here and you wanna know more about it, you like civ uh, Minoan civilization, you're definitely gonna feel right at home right here. So just outside of Phaistos, just a few minutes away as you're driving down, there's this place called Taverna Agios Ioannis. Now, we've been here three years ago. This place was great. What I really like about this place is they have a nice kind of like kids park here. They have a nice taverna serving some good food and the kids can also have a lot of fun. All right, so we ordered her food. So while we were waiting, the kids kind of had fun over there, but the food got here now. So one of my favorite things to do in a small village of Crete is just eating some traditional Cretan food. One of my favorite things, of course, is tacos. Pretty much everywhere you go here on the island, they make an unbelievable dacos. Dacos, of course, is like this kind of like bread rusk with some olive oil, uh, some kind of like tomato. It's like a tomato sauce almost. It's like you take these fresh tomatoes and you really mash them down into almost like a puree. And also you put some cheese. Usually I believe it's a Mizitra cheese or a, a local cheese here in Crete. And that's basically it. It's a simple dish, but it's unbelievably delicious. Look at that. That bread rusk is huge. And you can see that beautiful uh, cheese on it and that tomato as well. There's also some Cretan herbs on there as well. Let's try this out before it crumbles all over the place. Wow, I really took a mouthful there. You can see that bread rusk is just very, very, very thick. So you probably should take just a small bite and not a huge, huge bite like I did. But it's delicious. It's nice and hard on the outside, kind of like crispy or uh, crunchy, I should say. But on the inside, it's nice and soft because that olive oil has been kind of soaking in the bread and that tomato and that cheese combination. Just really, really nice. Some people from North America might be confused by this dish because of course you see burger on the menu, you think, oh, it's gonna come in a nice burger bun. It's gonna come with onions, tomatoes, and the whole deal with a nice sauce or ketchup and mayo and mustard and whatnot on the bun. Well, here in Greece, actually, when you see burger on the menu, it just comes in the form of like this flattened meatball. Basically a burger, but Sometimes it can be more like a meatball sausage. It's more of an Eastern European thing, I have to say. In other countries in Eastern Europe, you will see this hamburger. It will not come in a bun. It will just come as this kind of like, you know, like burger or kind of like a sausage. It's not even always made out of beef. Sometimes it's just made out of pork. Uh, but this one right here is made out of beef. And uh, you can see there's a nice charcoal, uh, you know, grill strips on it. So it looks, it looks very nice and you have like a little lemon to kind of like sprinkle on it to give it some nice freshness. It's like that. Mm. Mm. Oh. It's very, very nice. It was just, it was just taken off the grill actually. It's melting your mouth. Really nice and tender. How do you like your souvlaki? Mmm, very good. All right guys, so we're gonna cut the video right here. So if you guys are in the region, please come to Festos. Also go to Agia Triada. You can come and eat right here or there's a bunch of other places in the region. This place is absolutely gorgeous. If you're in the area of Matala and you wanna do something more historic, definitely come and check out Festos and Agia Triada. You will not regret it. All right, guys, so that will do it for today. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Give the video a big thumbs up, and we'll see you guys.